finally made it to my favorite spot here on the high sea deck in a coastal waterway. Um, I was really hoping that my buddy Pedro would be here. And he is. <laughs> he comes here every single time and tries to steal my croaker before I can even get him in. So I always feed him a few. I'm pretty excited. I finally got my leaders in that last video. I cut it out, but he came and dropped them off to me. So we'll be testing those out today. Uh, we got viper leaders, big jaw hookers. There's the seven aught here, the eight aught. And he also gave me some pre made bull red rigs, which I'm definitely a fan of. So I got my snap swivel here. I always recommend taking pliers and crushing that in because they do break off. And then I got my slide here. So that weight can slide. And you got a huge, probably 10 odd hook here, the four foot line. So I got that on my two big rods. And of course, you got the fish bites. So hopefully we can get some Pedro, some fish. I can get a few to take home. But uh, let's get after it. You got these rocks here. I'm gonna put this. Hmm. I'll keep the net somewhere around here. I've actually never had to use it. Um, anytime you catch whiting certain fish, you can pull them up right here. Super easy. Keeps you out of the shallow. It's actually way deeper. Where I was yesterday, and I caught that black drum. You know, 50 yards down the shore, it is shallow. But over here, it's a pocket. It's right where the channel meets the Surfside Jetties. And it is deep and there's definitely fish holding there every time I come here. So off to my right, get two chunk baits out. And then I'll just sit here and fish my fish bites. And every time I have hooked a big fish, I can guide them in all the way over to here to where the flats are. And uh, makes things a lot easier. So I have a two ounce disc weight. So see if that holds. Looks like the current's quiet today too. Come up here on the bank. Let's see if we can catch Pedro fish. Wow. Really launched those two ounce sinkers. That's, you know, 60% away across the river. Now, granted, I could probably fish right in front of me, but what's the fun in fishing if you can't launch it? And on top of that, I've just always seemed to catch more whiting and bigger sand trout. I think there's a pocket in the middle of this entire river that's cut out for the boats and the barges. So I said the other day this was a six foot rod. It's actually a seven um, with a 5,000 reel. I love this reel, Pen Fierce 3. I think it was only 90 bucks and it's, uh, it's done me real well. Not saying that this $40 Walmart ugly stick hasn't, that pulled in so many fish and it's just reliable for a cheap little reel. That was the first one I bought when we hit the road. And then I just picked up this guy at an estate sale down the street, which is a D-Wave, I think it's a 6,000? It's a 5,000 with a 10 foot, uh, 10 foot Daiwa D-Wave surf rod which is exciting because I've been waiting to get out in the surf, but with these little seven foot rods, all I do is pick up seaweed and it's not too fun. Feels like a croaker. Trying to get some bait out there. There goes Pedro. No, I don't think so, but I don't even have any bait yet. You can have the third one. Crazy. There you go. Don't get greedy. You just drop it, you dumb shit. What am I gonna do with this guy? Ciao, Pedro. All right, so we just changed out the fish bites. Try out this squid. And ever since I started making these homemade, instead of the store-bought ones, 100% I'm catching bigger fish. Before it was almost all croaker with a whiting here and there maybe a small sand trout and i know there's sand trout in here so it was bothering me and uh once i made it made it myself with clear line that same day i probably took home five sand trout four whiting and then that big uh black drum the other day always bring a cooler full of ice 
Sometimes I put them on my stringer, but the other day I caught a huge bull red. I think it was 36 inches. And uh, it seems that either in the channel on the way into this, um, to this waterway, um, the jetty channel, either a shark hit it or potentially when I was railing it in here, it fought me for a good five minutes. And when I railed in, it had a chunk taken out of it and a huge gash. Um, and I really didn't want to put it back to die. So the guys next to me ended up keeping it. I didn't want it. Um, when they get that big, the meat's no good. You know, it could have worms. And on top of that, it's tough. Um, I did try to cook one that somebody else kept and gave me a piece of the other day. And it turned out like lobster meat. It's just really, really dense, and tough meat. It's no good to me. Keep the smaller fish all day. But uh, that same day, I had a whiting on my stringer, and when I went to leave and pull it in, something bit it in half. So I would like to say it's the same shark, but who knows? It feels pretty big. It's probably a whiting. Or a southern kingfish, I think is what they're technically called. Fucking Pedro. <laughs> Get out of here. Hey, we got to sell sand trout. I don't really want them though. And he seems a little big to just give to Pedro. So I really don't want to. Sorry, bud, you gotta wait. There's definitely a fish on there because I didn't cast it over there. I cast it in the middle of the river. Holy crap. So whatever took it, swam with it. It's only a two ounce sinker, so it's a pretty decent fish. Probably a sand trout. Come on, Pedro. I told you about that. Oh, man. That's a first. Pedro. Hey. Asshole. It's my fish. Now, that is a much better chunk of bait. Not gonna change it yet though. I'll let him swim around for a bit. Mainly because I wanna keep those two pieces in the water because something did just hit that 10 foot rod. I wanna see if he's still there. Pedro, that wasn't nice. Could have hooked your beak and we'd all be in trouble. Maybe I should stop feeding this guy, man. First time he's done that, usually he waits. He's greedy. Probably because I haven't given him a fish yet. Maybe it's my own problem. I think I need to Google pelican training and how do you tell him no? That wasn't cool. Hey, Pedro, no. Don't do that again or you won't get no more food from me. Huh? All right, so I replaced the double drop mainly because of Pedro. Yeah, you snagged another fish and broke my line off. I was able to get it out of his mouth, luckily. But uh, this is a much better rig anyways. One high, one low. The hooks aren't going to intersect like they were before. So, we'll see what happens. See, that's how you wait. Good boy, Pedro. I'm a fighter. Big croaker. No, not for you, bud. You get the little ones, Pedro. All right, there's one for you, Pedro. That, 
How's it going? What's that? No, that's Pedro's. Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> I thought I told you. You be careful. The hook gonna get in. I know, and it was beacon, then I'm gonna have to chase him down. Uh -uh. There you go. Uh -uh. A little whiting. No, Pedro. I like whiting. Oh, croca. Just a current. <sighs> You're not getting this one. It's too big. All right. It's too big for you. Told you. Decent sized croaker. <sighs> Sick of them though. Too big. He has a tough time swallowing them. But perfect size whiting. I guess you can have a whiting. Nice catch. That's a good size whiting. Still not big enough for me though. That is the biggest croaker. Oh no. Look at that beast. That's the biggest croaker I've caught. Jeez. Come on. One sand trout to finish the day. All right, so we're back at the homestead. It wasn't the most produ productive day ever, but um, yeah, caught a few fish. You know, everyday fishing is productive to me. So when I get back out there tomorrow morning, it'll be a better tide fish the incoming tide from about 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, looks a lot more productive. We'll see what happens.